The final topic we're going to talk about is the effect of irrigation water on plant nutrition. Irrigation water can supply essential plant nutrients. One part of that is from mineral acids. If you acidify to get rid of alkalinity, you will probably also add nutrients to the water. So if you're using phosphoric acid, you're going to use you're going to add phosphorus to the solution. If you're adding sulfuric acid, sulfur, nitric acid, nitrogen. And so the concentration you add will also influence the concentration of those nutrients you're going to apply. Nutrients can also be found in the irrigation water. In general, with the macronutrients, you don't find very much N, P, or K, but you do find lots of calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. You do find some micronutrients. For example, boron, sometimes iron, and you, you get other salts. I call those junk salts, sodium, chloride, and fluoride. Now, if you look around the country, <clears throat> again, the U.S. average for calcium is around 40 parts per million. The Midwest states where you have a lot of alkalinity, you also tend to have a lot of calcium. Um, states where you have low alkalinity, New Jersey, North Carolina, you have a very minimal amount of calcium. Magnesium concentrations follow a similar pattern. Uh, where you have a lot of alkalinity, you tend to have a lot of magnesium, um, with the exception of Florida. With Florida, north, northern Florida tends to have a fair amount of magnesium in their water, similar to what you'd find in Illinois, Ohio, or Michigan. South Florida, on the other hand, tends to have very low levels of magnesium. So lots of calcium, very little magnesium. And again, where you have states that have low alkalinity, you have low magnesium levels. <clears throat> boron concentrations generally are low everywhere, with the exception of maybe California. So the U.S. average is 0 0.02 parts per million boron. However, in every state, you will find areas that have high levels of boron. Finally, sodium. We've already covered that. <clears throat> now, it's important to remember the nutrient levels that you get in your water-soluble fertilizer solution are a combination of the fertilizer, the irrigation water, and the acidification. All three of those factors influence nutrient levels. An example of this is if we use 15015 fertilizer at 200 parts per million. In the first example, we have a pure water source with no acid. So the fertilizer is giving me 200 parts nitrogen, zero phosphorus, 165 parts per million potassium, 150 calcium, no magnesium, no sulfur. My water is giving me very little calcium, very little magnesium, very little sulfur. And my acid is giving me nothing. So the total fertilizer solution would be 200 nitrogen, zero phosphorus, 165 potassium, 170 calcium, six magnesium, three sulfur. Now compare this to the same 15015 a fertilizer solution at 200 parts per million nitrogen, but this is a Midwest well water, and they have a lot of calcium and magnesium in the water, and they have a, they're using sulfuric acid to neutralize the alkalinity. So the total ends up being 200 nitrogen, same as before, zero, 165 potassium, same as before, but now we have 240 parts per million calcium. 40 parts per million magnesium, and 56 parts per million sulfur. So in this case, the phosphorus levels remain the same, but the calcium, magnesium, and sulfur levels are much higher because of the addition of, from the water and the acid. Third example would be the same Midwest water, but they're using phosphoric acid instead. So if you look at the total, here I'm still getting my same 200 parts per million nitrogen, but now the phosphorus levels are 101 parts per million. Same potassium level, same calcium level, same magnesium level as with the sulfuric acid, and lower sulfur. Now compare these three fertilizer solutions. They're all using 15015, but each one's different because of the water and the acid use. Example one, the grower has to worry about phosphorus deficiency, magnesium deficiency, and maybe sulfur deficiency. Example two, the grower would only have to worry about phosphorus deficiency. The third example, that grower probably doesn't have to worry about any nutrients because they're applying lots of phosphorus compared to the other one. So the same fertilizer 
but three significantly different fertilizer solutions, all because of the differences in water and acid use. Now, what's important in a water test? First would be alkalinity. Okay. <clears throat> in general, you want to see that less than 350 parts per billion, because if levels are higher than that, Growers tend to have a problem with salt buildup because of the acidification, or they have problems with pH management if they're not acidifying. Calcium and magnesium concentrations. Generally, you want to have less than 150 calcium and less than 75 parts per million magnesium, because if you get above those levels, you have a hard time balancing out your nutrition program with those high levels of calcium or magnesium. They end up becoming junk salts at high rates. Okay, the junk salts, generally you want less an EC of less than 1.5 millisiemens per centimeter. If you're growing plugs or you're propagating, you probably want it even lower than that, maybe around 0.75. That's the maximum level you want for propagation. Sodium levels, you want less than 50 parts. Chloride levels, you want less than 70 parts. Again, those two things, if they're higher than that, they can cause salt buildup. Sulfur less than 120 parts, same thing, above 120 parts, you get to salt problems. Boron levels, generally speaking, most people have low boron. The few that do have high boron. Anything above a half a part per million can cause problems with poinsettias that are particularly boron sensitive. Above one part per million, you can have problems with most crops. One of the problems with boron is it's difficult to get rid of. Uh, reverse osmosis purification will not remove boron. Fluoride, less than one part per million. Chloride, or chlorine, free chlorine, less than two is listed here, probably more likely less than five parts per million before you start having phytotoxicity. Finally, here's some common irrigation water problems and what to do about them. High alkalinity solution, use a strong mineral acid. Acidify with a strong mineral acid to reduce your alkalinity. Okay, that will supply nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, or sulfur, depending on the acid. You can also use fertilizers that are high in ammoniacal nitrogen to neutralize the acidity. However, those fertilizers don't contain calcium. You can have problems with growth characteristics. You can have potential for, for ammonium toxicity at low temperatures and saturated conditions. Low alkalinity. There's not a real problem having low alkalinity. There's no zero alkalinity doesn't mean you can't grow good quality crops. But what it does mean it's very easy to drive the media pH down. So you have to be very careful at using ammoniacal nitrogen fertilizers. High EC. <clears throat> Remember, use high leaching rates and higher fertilizer concentrations to compensate for the high leaching rate. High boron. The recommendation is typically to use fertilizers that contain calcium and maintain your pH above 6. The problem is fertilizers that contain calcium also have relatively low ammoniacal nitrogen levels. So if that high boron is in conjunction with, with high alkalinity, you can have problems unless you acidify. High sodium, use higher leaching rates, use fertilizers that contain calcium and magnesium, and you're going to leach. Low calcium, use fertilizers that contain calcium. However, fertilizers that contain calcium don't have a lot of ammoniacal nitrogen. Again, that's fine if the alkalinity is low, but if the alkalinity is high, you might have a problem unless you acidify. Finally, low magnesium, use fertilizers that contain magnesium nitrate, CalMag fertilizers, or you use mag sulfate. Either of those two are very good at supplying magnesium. You use you, but if you use calcium in conjunction with it, you're going to want to use magnitrate with the calcium. If you don't have to use calcium, use magsol. 